at Congress are live translated between English and German and to one additional language. We appreciate your feedback. Please use the hashtag hash C3T. Your translators for this talk are uh, bread on toast and OS 10,000. After Corona is right in the middle of the climate crisis. Rückmeldung, weil ich hier auch kein visuelles Feedback habe. Um, yeah, it's get low. The Frage. So we, we have the illusion of um, being invulnerable. I have looked at the uh, year review from last year. We, we were looking at the Wuhan hospital and, um, and how it was built in three days. We are invulnerable. Um, things just continue. And then the, the, the Robert Koch Institute said the, the danger of this thing coming to us is low. The problem with Corona is not the mortality. We have 30,000 deaths in Germany, which is dramatic, but um, alcohol and smoking are more dangerous. Corona leads us to pivot points. We, have, uh, we wanted to flatten the curve, and, and we saw it in, in Bergamo. And, uh, and our hospitals uh, were uh, overtaxed. And this is why we have to flatten the curve. And this only works with a shutdown. So we have to pivot our whole um, social and, and, and um, health system. And the problem with Corona is we don't see it. And I don't see being infected. And I don't know any uh, Corona deaths. And when the human can't see it and they, they don't uh, observe it, the, they, they don't acknowledge it. There's, there's plenty of small particles that um, that can do something. So now he's talking about um, carbon dioxide, and he said if, if it's pink, um, then we would actually see it. We would. Uh, we would we would feel it. So uh, carbon dioxide is invisible, and we don't really see anything. But we can observe that uh, carbon dioxide generates changes. So carbon dioxide has already pivoted two neighboring planets, Mars and uh, Venus. They, they both should have temperatures that are supportive of life, and Venus has more than 400 degrees uh, because of the CO2. So with carbon dioxide, you can, you can tilt a system into a different state. So I advise those people um, go to Venus and, um, and have a look at the 400 degrees and then um, you have some sense of what carbon dioxide can do. So if we had um, multiple percentages, um, then uh, it would be impossible to live here, but we're here in parts per million. And when we have little CO2, then uh, there's an ice age. And with um, lots of CO2, we have um, a, a heat uh, phase. The thing that has happened between 1750 and here we, we see how it has grown. We have pushed it to something that has not been seen for 300 million years. 
ist im Vergleich zu Venus immer noch niedrig, aber wir brauchen ja auch keine 400 Grad. So, so this is not that much as in the Venus, but we don't need 400 degrees. Und um, dafür reichen diese And um, to change it to a few degrees, the small changes will be enough. And this is what we see is the temperatures over the last 20,000 years, so since the last ice age. Um, now on the right side, we are now in a, a warm period. Uh, the ice, uh, ice Uh, age ended about 10,000 years ago. So if we look from minus 20,000 to minus um, 5,000 years ago, there's around 4 degrees Celsius plus. And if we look now in the present, there's this uh, rapid increase in the last 100 years. This is about one degree Celsius, equivalent to a quarter of an ice age to a warm period. It's a very strong increase and strong change fast change. So in comparison, the, um, the progress from the ice, uh, ice, time, ice age to the warm period took about 10,000 years, but we have done this in the, in the very recent past. So we haven't seen this for a very long time of history. The one degree um, plus we can see pretty easily because we have here the uh, the northern Arctic area. Um, in the lower, lower part is Canada, right, it's, um, it's uh, Russia, and we compare it from the 70s to today, and we see a radical uh, decline in uh, sea ice. We, uh, we assume that in the middle of the century we will have an ice-free North Pole. Um, but we also need to have uh, to think about what will happen when the um, when the land ice is uh, melting. So, for instance, green uh, Greenland, there will be uh, large changes. We also see a lot of more fires, for instance, Australia this year and uh, Siberia. So areas where you don't expect a lot of white fires appearing or California. So uh, due to the uh, changes in uh, participation um, through the uh, climate change, uh, we see the drastic changes. This is the German forest. We also have here lots of um, differences and changes to the uh, precipitation and rain. So. Um, We have uh, basically the a big uh, dieback of forests here in Germany, and this is just due to one degree plus. Also, there is a lot of um, dry um, dryness here in Germany, so we have a problem of bringing up the resources for the River Rhine, as you can see here, um, and uh, climate change already produces a lot of millions uh, Euro and euros of damage to the economy. And this is just one degree plus, which from which we know it's already there. And, um, Uh, Our models predict, as with business as usual, to, uh, to, uh, to have an increase at the end of the century of about 4 degrees Celsius. So, if in the, in the next 100 years temperatures will go up in the same way they done before, um, then uh, we will have a change as if we coming from an ice age to a warm period. And um, for um, from comparison in the ice age, Germany is covered with 400 meters ice. So the planet will change from an ice time, uh, ice age to, um, to the present warm period very rapidly, uh, very much, and th this will happen very rapidly rapidly and we are in a really big concern about that. So what would be the worst case of um, a, a sea level rise? It would be about three meters. And um, yeah, Miami already has problems, but there will be vast areas which are going to be underwater. So a lot of hundred million 
persons, uh, people. So um, there will be a lot of migration from this areas to the uh, to other parts of the world. So in a moment, it's not that much, but uh, the development will increase, um, will uh, fasten up. We also see that uh, precipitation has changed. It's not raining here anymore, but uh, at the other place of the earth, it started raining much more. And therefore, water distribution is not uh, not very good right now. So lo lots of areas in Africa will have dryness all year round. If there's no uh, no rain, then we'll also have problems with uh, food, produ food production. So we've seen this in Germany two years ago. So the, it actually um, came to me the first time as a real thing two years ago. I'm living in uh, in the eastern of Germany and um, two years ago uh, people told me uh, to, uh, people told me yeah, during the German Democratic Republic we would have now a real problem. You, would, you know about climate change. Um, yeah, because I heard in the news we had 30 degrees, uh, 30 percent uh, reduction of food production, and in the German Democratic Re uh, Republic back then we couldn't have uh, managed this. So it made click in my head. No, the climate change isn't coming, it's already here. So, in comparison, if we're living in the Middle Ages, we would have real famine here in Germany right now. It would be one of the greatest famines here in uh, Europe ever. But today, we have the possibility to just buy the crops from anywhere else, and people are starving and other parts of the world. This is another study from colleagues of mine. Uh, three years ago, they Done this and they calculated for the worst case four to five degrees Celsius plus and what will happen uh, to the uh um, to the area where people live. So the red uh, areas in this map will be that hot that uh, people shouldn't be outside for longer periods of time or, uh, during the day because they might actually die. So, and you see that these are vast amounts of land, for instance, nearly all of Brazil, but also Indonesia, parts of Africa. So about one to uh, one one billion people would be um, um, would have to stay in their in their cellar during the day, which would also lead to a lot of uh, migration. We wouldn't have a situation like on Venus, where so planet wouldn't uh, just start burning and ignite, but um, vast areas of land would be uninhabitable. Um, we will have uh, one of the biggest or even the biggest ever migration of humans on the planet. And if we if you look at what uh, Europe is doing with 20,000 uh, re refugees in Greece, so we, we assume that it will be a, cat a catastrophe when billions of people are start migrating. And we need to be concerned that maybe civilization will destroy itself due to this. So we have to uh, really um, act now to get uh, to get this under control. In comparison to Corona, climate crisis is a complete other, um, other order of magnitude. We have to act now. We're always talking about the end of the century, and this is a bit difficult, because if my uh, generation is start calculating, and uh, well, it's not, it's not not um, our concern, but the young uh, generation, which is born 2010 or even now in 2020, um, the young generation will have to deal with this uh, catastrophe at its full extent. And so, therefore, in the last years, we saw the Fridays for Future movement, and um, people are telling, uh, so uh, young people tell us in school there is climate change and we need to do something about it, but in real life, see that there's nothing done about it. So, they come, uh, have been going on the street because they have to act now.
So, for in, in comparison to the Corona crisis, where there are also tipping points, um, we saw that it might be a period of time where you can manage to adapt to the situation, but at some points there are tipping points where you can't. So we assume this is 1.5 degrees Celsius plus. Um, and this might be a good comparison might be Bergamo in Italy in, uh, in March, where at, a, at some point the system just tipped and they had uh, chaos in the streets. This actually has managed to, um, to get to the uh, politicians and we have the Paris Agreement where we uh, agreed on redu um, reduce climate change to about 2 degrees Celsius and possibly less. And um, we have hope because a uh, new uh, US president has, um, elected US president has uh, announced to get back into the agreement. And um, But now we have to look and how fast we need to get active. Um, we sh uh, one, when should we act when we don't want to get over 1.5 degrees? We'll have just less than 400 gigatons of CO2. Um, and uh, in perspective, we already emitted 2,300 gigatons. So what's the rest budget? It's not that much anymore. So if the CO2 emissions go down linearly until 2040, then they must be at zero um, in order to not uh, pass this boundary. And uh, we see this doesn't look good. This is Germany. So ours are going down, uh, different to some other countries. So we are about generating one gigaton. So within 400 years, uh, we, we would be doing this ourselves. This is, however, we're being faster than this. At the moment, at the moment, this is going down through Corona. But we expect that uh, it'll go up again after Corona and um, then slowly going down. So there's there's no ambition from our politicians to uh, accelerate this uh, decrease. So the first few years are part of the reunification of Germany because um, the, the Eastern uh, industry has uh, broken down and then uh, we've only had a a decrease after 2000 and that was not so much. So here's the, the plan of the government. And uh, with Corona, it's, it's gone down. So, yeah, so. so our plan is 40% through 2020. And unfortunately, we will meet this one. This uh, takes the pressure off the government. But we expect that it'll go up again. The targets are not enough. If we really want to uh, achieve our goals, then we would have down into that green zone. So with what we're currently committed to, um, we're going for a two degrees Celsius increase. So with our um, targets, we cannot comply with the Paris Accord. So with the current goals, of the government, this doesn't work. So the question is, what can we do? What do we need to do? We need a, a true um, change in energy production. And the next 10, 15 minutes, I would like to describe this. So here you see the energy consumption. Um, here you see the, the various um, renewables, biomass, watercraft, windcraft, um, uh, photo, um, voltaics. And that doesn't look so bad. And doesn't, you can imagine that until 2040 we're at 100%. 
Jetzt muss man es anschauen. But, uh, Strom ist halt electricity is only part of it. So here's the same uh, diagram again, but um, shrunk a bit. Because we have other areas as well. So we have um, heating, we have travel, transport. So for, for heating we use um, gas and, uh, and oil, and uh, for transport we use um, gas and diesel. In some of these areas we, we do use wood or something, and we use a, a bio-diesel. Und uns die ganzen Bereiche Verkehr but if we look everything together, then we cover 20% of the consumption. So for the Paris Accord, the, the challenge is to come from 20%, less than 20% within 20 years to 100% renewables. Now, I'm, I'm working here in engineering sciences, and we, we look at it, uh, this is what it looks like. Many people say we use uh, nuclear energy, well, here's, here's nuclear energy, that's like 3 or 4%. So whether we use those or not um, doesn't really make any difference. We need to replace the gray area. We need a, a, a different uh, dimension. Von 20 auf 100 bei dem heutigen Verbrauch zu kommen. Aber wenn wir erstmal von oben runterkommen, dann wird es natürlich wesentlich leichter. So, was können wir dort tun? Das heißt also, wir brauchen eine echte Wärmewende. Wir gehen total ineffizient mit der Wärme um. Das heißt, wir verfeuern Erdöl und Erdgas. Und äh, wir wissen, dass wenn wir ja, die Klimakrise in den Griff bekommen wollen, dass wir keine fossilen Energieträger mehr verfeuern dürfen. Das heißt, also, wir brauchen ein sofortiges Einbau need an immediate, uh, für neue Öl und und stattdessen Prohibition auf, of um, fossil, uh, new fossil energies. Wärmepumpe wandelt Strom in Wärme um, aber sehr effizient. Um, okay, also, hier ist Umgebungswärme noch als Hilfsenergie und da kann ich jetzt einer Kilowattstunde Strom drei Kilowattstunden Wärme machen. Das heißt, wenn okay. ich die Gaspumpe rausschmeiße, so, um, Example Heating, um, if you if you exchange your gas heater with a, a heat pump, then you um, then you uh, will have lots of um, uh, new energy uh, reduction of uh, fossil energies unterwegs Dänemark Schweiz oder so aber Deutschland wir haben nicht mal Öl und die deutsche If you think about it we don't even have gas but uh, German government is is not um, doing this is not uh, enforcing this now example traffic we need to have a different um, different behavior with regards to traffic so people uh, germany has about 80 million um, inhabitants if we would uh, translate this to the whole world we would need to uh, build uh, 30 billion uh, 30 million more cars so if we should uh, if we would like to um, to bring our behavior to the whole world, we need to have a completely different uh, way of using traffic. So, um, traffic is much more difficult problem than, um, than heating because uh, we are using fossil fuels and uh, using them with just an efficiency of 20 to 30 uh, percent. Um, so we can't we can't do this. Uh, for longer. Um, we need electromobility in the in the first place with um, with public transportation with uh, trams. But if you want to have um, private uh, transportation, it needs to be electric because electric cars have a um, have an energy efficiency of a factor of three above uh, fossil fuels. So we need to reduce the energy consumption. This energy. 
So here we see a typical um, combustion engine will need about uh, six liters of uh, uh, petrol, and they get with one kilowatt hour about 1.8 um, kilometers. So we have the problem that uh, hydrogen is a bit inefficient in um, in production, um, and electric car would be a bit more efficient than the combustion engine. So on and all over, um, in, including the production costs, uh, hydrogen car won't get further than a combustion engine, conventional combustion engine. But if we would have a battery powered electrical car, uh, we wouldn't have that much of loss due to the hydrogen production and we would get two and a half times the, um, the range from the um, hydrogen car. And that's the key. So we need to get down with our cons energy consumption and we can this done by, um, by um, forbidding uh, fossil heating and uh, using electric cars. If we do could use this uh, few points very efficiently, we could reach, the, um, reach our goal of uh, the Paris Agreement, actually, if we enforce it now. And then the rest would have to be covered uh, climate neutral. This is the pathway uh, German government is enforcing right now, and uh, we we plan about increasing renewable energies a little bit and uh, doing this mainly by wind energy. And this is the current planning, which is not nearly enough. So there, you see, there is no vision the government brings here to increase the uh, energy change in Germany. Germany to renewables. There is, you have to uh, admit this. So there's a big question mark because we have no plan how to reduce the energy um, consumption right now. Um, so we see we have about a quarter of the speed we need to get um, our uh, economy to climate neutrality right now. So okay, what can you do else? You could uh, you could uh, use uh, solar thermic energy for heating, but this is not that much we can do with this. We could use uh, water power. This year is Norway, but we don't have this kind of environment here in Germany. A little bit in southern Germany, but that's not enough. So the really really most important energy forms you can use in Germany is wind and solar, and we have to increase them a lot. So, um, if we want to uh, use 100% renewable energies, then we would have to uh, use have an increase of three gigawatt hours per uh, per year, onshore, uh, offshore, and seven gigawatt um, gigawatts per year uh, onshore. Uh, uh, wind energy, uh, the first thing we can do is to do this offshore. Uh, people say if there's not going to happen in the Northern Sea, we do it in the, East, uh, in the Baltic Sea, but this is uh, Baltic Sea is much smaller. First thing we need to act on is uh, using all the places in the Northern Sea we can. So we need to reach about 8,000 uh, wind uh, nodes in the Northern Sea. And then we need to have a bit much, uh, much more onshore windmills. It's, uh, we need to have about um, uh, 67,000 wind, uh, windmills onshore. And this would be nice. We see it right. We see it uh, right now. The um, development and um, the reds are new windmills. Uh, yellow. These are uh, repowering old windmills. And blue is uh, what we actually in, uh, install new offshore. Um, so the uh, the figure before showed what we need, and this is what uh, what is happening due to new regulations a few years ago. So uh, new windmills basically aren't uh, constructed anymore. The uh, German government uh, changed a bit of the uh, legislation, but this wouldn't be nearly enough. 
Yeah, so, and still we see if we build a lot of lot of windmills or we can, then there is still a gap in the energy production and therefore we will need solar energy. In solar energy we need 18 gigawatts more per year and uh, right now we uh, build about 4 gigawatts more this year, uh, last year. So we need to have a significant amount in percentage of our land area. And if we look for, for example, Berlin, Berlin not is not even using one percent of uh, roof area for solar energy. There has to happen a lot, and uh, there needs to change a lot. And also, we need to go on the um, on the farmland um, because there is a lot of space for photovoltaic panels, for instance, in this way, which can be used. Uh, next to agricultural um, usage of the area. So we have about 180,000 square kilometers of uh, agra area. Um, so people say without solar panels they are nicer, but uh, we have to die in any death anyway. So what we also need is uh, storage, because uh, if there's no solar uh, sun and there's no wind, then we still need energy. So I think. Uh, we will uh, we'll have decentralized uh, battery storages, for instance, uh, for cars and for uh, a longer periods of time. For instance, what we have uh, produced in summer with sun energy, we would use something like power to gas, where we use water and uh, CO2 to produce um, methane gas. Methanol, uh, methane gas, and uh, store this in conventional uh, storage facilities, using them in the winter to produce uh, electricity and uh, heat. We calculated this also from an economic uh, point of view, and this is possible. And this, for example, is the biggest energy storage place in Germany. It's the gas uh, storage facility Reden. Um, gas is uh, stored under under the earth and we can store there 4.4 billion uh, cubic meters of uh, gas we have we have dozens of them so the problem of uh, storage is, is already solved and and uh, so switch to renewable energies would be economic feasible it's not that uh, expensive if we use the amount of money we used for corona then germany would be climate neutral overnight. Germany can do this actually for a crisis like Corona, but it seems strange that it's not doing this uh, for energy change. Which means we need a radical new policy on climate change. We also, but, uh, we, but we also need to change personally. And a big problem is that it hasn't reached the people. How, how difficult and how uh, catastrophic the climate crisis is. So, um, they, there's, a, um, there's a survey on what people think can reduce to uh, have their uh, have their carbon footprint uh, to reduce a farm. A lot of people think they wouldn't use uh, um, plastic bags, but in fact, this is not something where you really reduce your carbon footprint a lot. But um, it's just four ki uh, three kilograms of CO2 per year. But we produce 10,000 kilograms of uh, per person per year. So, for instance, we could do two uh, beef steaks per week, which Germans are using, um, consum consuming, would be 300 kilograms of CO2 per year. So we have to go for the meat consumption, because just the meat, con uh, meat production produces 10% of the CO2 and uh, contributes to climate change. So also one, uh, one air travel, it produces four tons of CO2 and these are the big fish. 
da, wir sehen ja jetzt uh, Okay, sure, we see with Corona. Uh, we can do with, dig uh, with digital technology a lot of with our travel. Driving cars uh, per person is 1.5 uh, tons CO2 per, uh, per year, uh, which is three times as much as people in Bangladesh. Um, also, German, uh, German home produces about four times that much of CO2 as uh, people in India. Um, with an energy car, you would also uh, reduce your um, emissions by one ton per year. A photovoltaic um, installation would, uh, would be sufficient. And you don't need your own home, you can use your balcony. So actually, there are ways uh, we could do it if we want to. Really important is that uh, the government is making the policies we need because um, people actually need to be forced to the solution sometimes. So we need the politicians. Next year here in Germany there will be general elections and it's important that it would be a big point in the, in the um, election decision how is their stand to climate change. So I think a good example for how we can do um, manage to do big things is um, John F. Kennedy said we choose to go to the moon in 1962. <laughs> Give an example, this time we used uh, punch card computers. So uh, this was a really, really big challenge back then, because you have to hit the moon. People said this will cost money and it's really, uh, really difficult. But people's uh, government said, yes, we pay this. We do this and um, we pay what has, has to be paid to reach the moon. Um, uh, the US alone paid uh, um, three billion dollars to reach the moon. And if we, if we would do the same for the future of our of our species, of humans, then we have a we have a solution. We should uh, we should make f uh, climate change to our new man on the moon challenge. We shouldn't wait now, we have to act. So with this, thanks for your attention. Here are a few links um, where you can see all this uh, compact information I give you in a bit more extensive way. For instance, on my website, on my YouTube channel, and uh, from three years, uh, from uh, for three months now, there's a podcast from uh, with me. So thanks for your attention, and um, I hope that there's a bit of time to discuss uh, this topic. Ja, herzlichen Dank, Volker. Das war Thank you, Volker. This was a lot of information. So if this is uh, actually so important, why isn't it done? So uh, we see there are two points. Um, for instance, there is the uh, thing like with Corona, the people who think it's all, uh, all crazy and lies. There are also the people who deny climate change. And um, this is this is a problem. For instance, with the AfD here in Germany, um, if you tell the people you don't have to uh, to um, decrease your consumption, then people will vote for them. And so the big parties like CDU, SPD, um, people will actually vote for these people. Um, so and therefore you see that uh, in terms of renewable energy. CDU um, campaigns are pretty much the same as uh, with AfD, AfD campaign. So right populists here in Germany, for those who aren't familiar with it. So what, what can, so people are asking how to use combustion engines with, uh, with climate change. No, there is no way for this. Um, so also for, uh, for the car manufacturers, this is a problem because um, they produce the cars. Um, for we have the uh, petrol scandal few years ago, this was a good thing because it's, it, um, 
brought, uh, brought them a bit a uh, step forward and they now have electric cars. But also there is the things like um, energy uh, companies and uh, yeah, the energy companies have long running contracts to use fossil fuels. And if they break these contracts, then it's a problem for them. These are old legacy problems. And of course, it's also nice to um, travel by airplane to a holiday. Last year, 2019, 3% uh, were traveling by an airplane, 97% didn't travel by airplane. But if in Germany we say that um, flying away and, and into holiday is not an option anymore, then uh, that is a threat to the elections. Okay, I understand. The, the political aspect is a big topic. You mentioned briefly nuclear energy. It's very clean. Uh, why are we not using it? Well, it's clean when we don't have a problem, but we've seen that uh, problems do occur. When I was growing up, uh, we, we did have problems. So it's, it's clean up to a point. There's, there's no CO2, but um, but you, uh, you still have an incredibly long uh, legacy. Let's ignore the risk. Let's just say we, let's say we, we, we manage the risk and the, the long term, uh, but everything is against it anyway. Nuclear energy covers three to four percent of electricity. Uh, three percent is nothing. It's, uh, burning wood has more. So really it's not a, a topic. We would have to build hundreds of new nuclear facilities in Europe. Next point is nuclear energy is very expensive. We're building, we're building two new one in Finland, one in, uh, in Britain. Britain has restarted. It's uh, three times as expensive as wind and solar. It's a, it's a dangerous technology, it's expensive to build, it has a very small fraction, and the, the fissile material is, is not really available widely. If we suddenly start building 5,000 nuclear facilities, um, then, then, then we'll use up all the uranium, and then we have to look for other stuff. We have to start hoping for fusion, which we'll never know whether it works. For, for me, uh, nuclear energy is an excuse not to change anything. Let's just keep them running and then I can continue to uh, fly to my vacation. Actually, it's not an option. Of course, the society doesn't like change. How can we, uh, how can we move this topic more into the center of society so that people get an awareness? The last year has helped a lot to create awareness. In 2018, we were frustrated. We were very frustrated. My, my, um, we've not been publicizing only since Fridays for Future. We've, we've been doing it longer for the last 20 years. None of this is new. Two, two or three years ago, we said, we, we say go left and the, and the government goes still right. That was our impression. We had two, two experiences that, that were game changers. So there was 2018. In 2018. So um, going to Sweden, uh, I, uh, I saw it. 
man muss es sehen. Ja? Also ja. wir sehen, in anderen Ländern haben wir die eigenen Sachen, also Australien mit diesen enormen Buschfeuern, also Australien, eines der schlimmsten Klimasünderländer, also Kohleexporteur, auch da finden ein Umdenken statt, weil sie sehen, dass sie ihr eigenes Land damit zerstören. Also das heißt, die Klimakrisen, die Ereignisse, die wir haben, verändern etwas. Und ähm, diese Vereine haben natürlich auch dann das Land... Uh, there is a lot happening. For instance, in Australia, Australia is the biggest export of coal, but um, due to the big wildfires, there is a change of mind. Also, in other countries, there is um, a moves to, um, to act on climate change. So, but we are also are, um, are misdoers, because um, also we in the climate movement we produce CO2 and lots of CO2. Uh, may I shortly interrupt? We have a lot of questions here. Uh, just a little bit, because this is very interesting. And there are lots of question, questions uh, we would like to over, overdo our time. So just a few sentences. From me. Do you really think we'll get the curve? Yes, it would be possible. So, if there's, uh, if you ask me, if is there the technology can we do can we do it? I would say yes. Second question, can we pay for it? And if I look on Corona, I would say yes, definitely. So we can say two times yes. And if you ask, are we ready for? It, I'd sadly say no. But this is a, a psychological problem and a political problem. But if we can solve this, if we can solve this, I don't know. But um, for instance, if there is an asteroid uh, on collision course to Earth, we wouldn't say no, there is no solution. We would say, yeah, we can find a solution. So I interrupt again on uh, technical questions. How is it about sustainability of solar um, solar energy um, panels so how long are they um, how long can they be used or how what's about uh, recycling of them so yes of course every technology has a footprint and also renewable energies has a have a renewable footprint this is not zero but it's uh, 10 times smaller than fossil fuels and conventional energy and you have to uh, think about this you have to try to get it under control um, silicon is a um, is a the resource also um, other materials are really uh, resources for instance for wind energy copper and uh, um, steel the rotors are from cfk they have recycling problems you also can of course can recycle the uh, the steel from the tower so if you compare it cars can't be recycled fully so this is a problem there are problematic uh, resources in there so we have to think about it Another argument or question on the materials and resources. Um, what's about the batteries? What's about the lifetime? Um, how, what's about their recyclings? Are there progress that's been made? Yes, definitely. In terms of batteries, we are in the Stone Age. Stone Age. So um, you could, for instance, use solid state batteries, which have a factor of 10 better energy efficiency. Um, and in 10 years, I think about today's uh, battery technology, we would, uh, we would just laugh. And um, I think the prices will go down, but batteries will become better. And uh, because of this, I think we'll see a dynamic uh, development. And it is a good thing that we discuss this in comparison to the combustion engine. Um, you can uh, relativize this, but um, for instance, there are cobalt-free uh, batteries in the development, so we'll have a lot of progress. Another topic which wasn't uh, discussed so far, what about uh, geothermal energy? 
Uh, yes, right. Uh, geothermal energy is really interesting, for instance, Eastland or um, Turkey. But here in Germany, uh, the geothermal energy is very, very deep in the earth. We have to deep, uh, we have to dig for three to four kilometers, and one kilometer costs about a million euros. So this is very expensive. So therefore, uh, geothermal energy can be used in Germany, but uh, it's uh, much more expensive than the other forms of renewable energies. But you can use it, for instance, in the Rhine area, in Bavaria, but a lot of uh, places in Germany, it's not uh, not a good idea, not feasible. So, how about CO2 emissions you spoke about? Um, is the reduction real or is it just that we exported our footprint to China, for example? Uh, yes, in, in parts. For instance, if we close a steel, um, steel production uh, plant here in Germany and export it to China, then our emissions go down. And there is a small part in the reduction from this, but there are no real numbers on this. On that, um, I think that the um, decrease in emission is actually real because we see there are power plants, coal plants which are um, turned off, and yes, energy change uh, cause a decrease in emissions, but uh, also other factors play in. But these factors are just a smaller, uh, smaller part. So. Another question, um, what's uh, black uh, roads do to the um, to the absorption of energy from sunlight on Earth? Yeah, of course, if I also what's doing this on solar models. Uh, yes, if you build solar modules, it depends on where you build them. If you put them on a roof, then there are black um, then the roof already is black, so it already um, uh, already absorbs a lot of energy. So there won't be a difference. But if you put them, for instance, in the uh, sand desert, then it's becoming a bit darker. Obviously, uh, parts of that energy it's absorbed is also converted to electrical energy. So yes, there is an impact on the um, on the balance of the energy balance of the Earth. But uh, it's it's small. So, but uh, if you, for instance, look at Germany, uh, 13 percent of uh, land uh, land area is um, is um, human made. So, um, in comparison to our other in infrastructure um, impact from uh, renewable energies on the energy balance would be um, neglectable. Um, uh, so what about, what about uh, solar roadways? Yes, they tried this, um, but uh, I don't know if it's a good idea because there is abrasion from the tires on the street and um, Yes, it's it's a very very difficult to do, and it uh, needs to uh, resist heavy loads. So don't think that's a real solution. So how about recycling of solar modules? Uh, so a counter argument would be. Um, that can't be recycled. So, um, yes, solar modules can actually be recycled. They are milled down to very uh, small parts, and then the essential resources like uh, silicon, aluminium, silver can be uh, recovered. Um, some parts can't be recovered, like um, like plastics, um, but the rest is really good in recycling. Okay, so the last question. Um, how can you prevent uh, politicians from uh, pushing the solution to the future, like 2030, 2040, 2050? What can we actually do? Yeah, therefore, actually, Fridays for Future helped a lot. Um, so gov uh, the government set the deadline to 2030. 2030 is not that much away, so it's about 10 years. So 
so we actually will see very fast um, if we are actually on track. So still Germany needs to improve policies, but um, actually we will see fast what's happening. So this pushing to the future won't be uh, working anymore. For instance, also for the European Union, there's legislation um, which says 2030 we need to be climate neutral. And now we have to ask the question what's happening very, uh, very frequently. So, uh, so, for instance, just go to your member of parliament. Yes, for instance, go to your local, um, local member of parliament, ask them if you want to have my vote next year, what are you doing on climate change? How do you, um, uh, how do you want to achieve the European Union's goals for climate change in 2030? Of course, then a lot of times um, you'll get a lot of warm words. Um, but uh, yeah, just ask. So from now we have uh, three quarters of a year to the um, to general election in Germany. Um, we need to be um, uh, you, we need to ask them and push them. So thank you for your talk. Thanks for the invitation and uh, have a lot of fun for the rest of the conference.